Hi, I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Nuggets of Truth. A close cousin to the question that we asked last time in our third video in our salvation series, how do I receive salvation, is this question, how do I know I have salvation? That's a very pertinent question, which we will endeavor to answer in this, our last and final video in our four-part series entitled, Salvation. We've answered the questions, one, what is salvation? Two, why do I need salvation? Three, how do I receive salvation? And now, how do I know I have salvation? Now that we know the what, the why, and the how of salvation, now we really need to know if we really have it. Do we have this thing called salvation? If you haven't seen the other three videos, I would encourage you to check them out. The links are below. Or if you know someone who might benefit from these series, please send a link to them. All right, now turn with me, please, to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved Paul makes it abundantly clear when he made that statement that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart we will be saved that's all about faith we must believed first of all that Jesus came and that he died and was raised to life again and that he paid the ultimate price for sin and and if we come to him in prayer believing that he hears us and if we receive him he will receive us and we will be saved look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 for grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So it is Jesus' grace that saves us and nothing else. Well, our belief in him, obviously, or our faith in him. But there is absolutely nothing more than that, the belief that you can do to earn salvation. You can't earn salvation. It doesn't matter what you do. It is freely given to each and every one of us who ask. And that's it. Nothing else. So we covered in our last video, part three, that this salvation is not for Jews only, but for us Gentiles as well. Because God is no respecter of persons, meaning he does not favor one person or one race over another. He loves each and every one of us the same. John 3:16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God so loved the whole world, not just the rich or the poor or the white or the black or the Jews only. No, but the whole wide world because he created the whole wide world and the whole wide world is his according to Psalms chapter 1. So someone might ask, are you sure all I have to do is to repent or confess my sins? Yes, that's all you have to do. Confess, ask. Someone else might ask, is repentance a one-time thing only? The answer can be found in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 through chapter 2, verse 1. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. 
I believe repentance is an ongoing thing. We are instructed not to sin, but if we do sin, I am not talking about that deliberate sinning though. I'm talking about the kind where we're not taking advantage of God's grace. You know, there's some sins that lead to death. Others do not lead to death. I'm talking about those that do not lead to death. But they're honest mistakes. If those that we're talking about, we have an advocate who is Jesus Christ the son of the living God, the one who paid our sins. We confess, repent, and endeavor not to commit the same sin again and again. Otherwise, we will be crucifying the son of God all over again, over and over and over. Number three, no one who has repented or changed their worldview continues to willfully sin just because they feel they can repent later. We just don't do that. Grace is not a license to sin. It is not an indulgence. When you get saved, a temptation will come to you. It will be a really good opportunity, one that you feel you cannot pass up because it is a chance of a lifetime. At least that's how it will present itself to you. And you will feel that this is your only chance. It'll be a a chance like Joseph had, a chance to sleep with his master's wife. People may think, wow, that's only once in a lifetime chance, but it's a lie. Do not fall for that. That will only lead you to death and it will knock you off the track. It will debunk you. It, It will push you off the path to your success, to your calling. So look out for temptations by the enemy. John told us that Jesus is faithful and just to forgive anyone who asks him to. And we can rest assured in that promise. So we endeavor not to continue living in the flesh. Or in other words, we stop willfully sinning. Look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 3 through 10. And anyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Anyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Verse 5. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has even seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, and as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Now verse 9. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So once we have come to Jesus, we don't continue in sexual immorality like the world does. And it does not matter what they say or how they try to skew and mess up scripture. They try to stretch it and uh, and pervert it. But do not listen. We do not continue in sexual immorality. We do not continue in lying. We do not continue in cheating and stealing and in murdering. We are not murderers. We give life. We speak life. So we seek to live by faith in holiness with the hope of living with Jesus in eternity. Now, let me just sum this all up for you. How do I know I have salvation? If you have asked and you have believed that you have received, then you have salvation. It is all in faith. Yes, sometimes you will feel like you are not saved. But if you have not deliberately sinned, it is the trick of the enemy to knock you off track and to make you doubt your own salvation. 
But then it is also sometimes necessary to go back to Jesus and repent of something you might have done. That was not a rebellious act. But with that said, even rebellious acts can be forgiven if we are are sorrowful and we come back to Jesus and we repent and we endeavor not to do that rebellious act again. So we do not take advantage of Jesus' grace because if we take advantage of his grace, this is what Hebrews says, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 through 29. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and the fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace? So even if sometimes we have to go back and repent for something we did, we don't live in fear that God is watching and waiting in heaven just to pow, get us. He is a good, good God, and he loves us. He cares about us. He sacrificed his son, Jesus, on the cross for us. And we can rest assured that Jesus is our advocate, and he is always interceding for us. I hope this video has helped and to encourage you. And if you like this video, would you please hit the like button and share it with someone? Then would you subscribe to our channel? Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenny Yates, and this has been Nuggets of Truth. Be blessed and stay blessed.